Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at Envocoder. It's a very powerful plugin for getting new and bizarre sounds in music production. For a successful use, first we must understand what a vocoder actually is. As with many other types of sound synthesis, here we combine two signals for creating the third, completely new one. These two signals are called a modulator and carrier. As the name suggests, the modulator signal modulates the carrier one in a special way. It's easy to understand if you're familiar with filters. First, the frequency range of the modulating signal gets split into numbers of ranges or bands. Let's say 10. Then each filter's output signal comes in a detector, aka envelope follower, which produces a control signal. Second, the frequency range of the carrier signal is also split into ranges. Their number and tuning are equal to those which are used for the modulating signal. Third, we apply the control signal from the envelope followers to continuously change the output level of corresponding carrier bands. In summary, each part of the modulating signal spectrum modulates the same spectrum part of the carrier signal. Now, when we know the theory behind the vocoder, let's hear some practical examples. To apply mVocoder, I insert it into an instrument channel whose signal I'm going to use as the carrier. The modulator is received through mVocoder's sidechain input, which I need to activate. All set? So let's hear it. Here are some rules you need to know when you deal with a vocoder. Rule number one. You'll get the output signal only when both a carrier and modulating signals are present at a vocoder's inputs. For example, I'm sending only a modulating signal into the M vocoder at the moment. And now, only a carrier one. Finally, both. Where we go when you're with me, I don't care. Rule number two. The spectrum of the output signal is defined by common regions a carrier and a modulated spectrums have. For example, let's hear what we will get if we use this carrier signal. and this modulator. And here is what we get. As you can see, we hardly can hear anything at all. And the reason is the modulator and carrier's signal spectrums don't possess anything in common. Here is another instance of a carrier signal. and a modulator. And the M vocoder's output is... Despite a prominent bass of the carrier sound and a crisp high frequency content of the modulator, the output signal is very much in a middle range. It's because this is the only common part the carrier and modulator signals have and a vocoder's output can only be within that region. Rule number three. The dynamics of the output signal includes the dynamics of both carrier and modulator one. What I mean is, if you use a highly dynamic modulating signal, for example, a speech, and a dynamic carrier signal, for instance, an evolving pad, then you should expect that some syllables or even words may disappear in the output signal. Moreover, you'll notice that at the time when both modulator and carrier signals are at high levels, the vocoder's output signal level will be even higher. 
and vice versa, if the carrier and modulating signals are low, the vocoder's output will be even lower. Thus, the dynamics of a vocoder signal, that is, the difference between the highest and lowest levels, is always higher than the dynamics of its input signals. If you want to get a predictable output signal, I'd recommend a compression of the modulator or carrier or both signals before sending them into a vocoder. Rule number four. The higher the number of bands, the better the quality of vocoding. Here, by a better quality, I mean that a modulator and carrier signal's character will be better manifested in an output signal. It's especially easy to notice on a speech pronunciation. I'll put my voice recording and a saw signal through the invocoder, and you pay attention to the intelligibility of my voice at different band settings. Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at Invocoder. It's a very powerful plugin for getting new and bizarre sounds in music production. For a successful use, first we must understand what a vocoder actually is. As with many other types of sound synthesis, here we combine two signals for creating the third, completely new one. These two signals are called a modulator and carrier. As the name suggests, the modulator signal modulates the carrier one in a special way. We've already learned quite a lot of information about vocoders and yet we've barely touched Envocoders interface. That's how broad and complicated this subject is. In the second part of this series, we'll go through each Envocoders controller and mode. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. Hi, in the second part of this tutorial, we'll have a look at Mvocoda, its controllers and modes. If you want to find out more about a vocoda in general, please watch the first part. At first glance, Mvocoda can make a very scary impression with all its knobs and submenus. And it's true, this is a complex plugin. However, you don't have to know every single part of it to get the classic vocoder sound. So what I'm going to do is, I'll start from the basic controllers and we'll move deeper and deeper. And if you feel that you've got enough of the information, just stop watching. Let's start. At the top of the user interface, we can see a mixer. Volume. As I mentioned in the first part of this tutorial, a vocoder's output signal can be very high. This knob helps to control it. I get your call in the morning. Envocoder allows us to have the original carrier and modulator signals at its output as well. However, this parameter doesn't influence them. As we're talking about the output level, here is a built-in limiter, which I would recommend you switch on every time when you're experimenting with the sound. The panorama sets a process signal's position between the left and right channels. I just woke up not feeling bright, but it hurt from last night. You say to me that didn't Again, it doesn't affect the carrier and modulating signals. The carrier volume is responsible for the level of the original carrier signal at the output. The carrier pan controls the original carrier signal location between the left and right channels. The modulator volume mixes the original modulating signal into the processed one. I get your call in the morning, still dark outside. You say that you'll be over in the next ten. The modulator pan changes the original modulating signal's pan position. I just woke up not feeling bright, body hurting from last night. You say to me, that's enough now. That's enough now. 
the bands knob sets the quality of filters used to split a carrier and modulating signals. As I have already demonstrated in the first part, the higher the number, the better the vocoding. At the bottom of mVocoder's interface, we find a section with level controllers of the bands. It's like a graphic equaliser, though not exactly. What we're dealing with is a set of band pass filters distributed from 20 Hz to 20 kHz, and here we adjust their relative levels. Pay attention to the scale. As you can see, the upper half works from 0 to plus 12 dB. However, the lower one goes from 0 dB to a silence. So if you move a band down to the very bottom of the panel, it will disappear completely. Remember this if you feel you're getting an unexpected result out of the section. To quickly return a band's level back to its initial position, use the right-click mouse. Well, that should be enough for you to start making robot-like noises. The rest of this tutorial is for those who want to know every single aspect of mVocoder. OK, let's dig a bit deeper. The ratio is multifunctional controller. Its behaviour depends on the selected mode. mVocoder offers eight different modes. The first one is a classic vocoder, which we know very well by now. In this mode, the ratio works as a balance between a vocoder and carrier signals. I get your call in the morning. Be over. The second one is vocoder, dual. When on, we have two vocoder processes working. First is when a modulator modulates a carrier, and the second one is the opposite of the previous, that is, a carrier modulates a modulator. The ratio knob sets the balance between these two vocoders. I get your call in the morning, still dark outside. You say that you'll be over in the next ten. The Morph 1 and 2 modes are meant to morph between a carrier and modulator. A modulator. And carrier. I'd also recommend to try this mode with a single source, with a carrier for Morph 1 and a modulator for Morph 2. Yes, you don't get any morphing. However, you will get a pretty interesting tool for a sound manipulation. Hear for yourself. We'll spend more time with it in the third part of this tutorial. For now, let's move on. I guess you're familiar with the ring modulation in synthesizers. mVocoder is capable of it as well. Simply select ring modulation to get that effect. 
just remember that M Vocoder is a filter-based plugin. That means that the sound of its modes heavily depends on the filters section. The ratio controller adjusts the balance between a ring modulator and a carrier in this mode. In the exciting mode, the dominant harmonics of a modulator and carrier get amplified even more. What it means is a bass-like sound will become even bassier and a sound from the mid-frequency range, for example, will get an additional boost in the mid-range. The inversion and dual inversion modes carry out the adverse effect to what Vocoda and dual Vocoda do in terms of amplifying or attenuating frequency ranges. If in Vocoda mode, a modulator defines the range that will be amplified in a carrier signal. Then here, in the inversion mode, the same range will be attenuated. This works particularly well on evolving pads. The ratio controller sets the balance between the process signal and the carrier one. The swap carrier and modulator button does what it says, handy if you want to quickly check the alternative for coding. The LR encoding will let you hear what happens if the left and right channels of the carrier input will modulate each other. The left and right channels become a carrier and modulator accordingly. It's also useful if you don't want or can't use the sidechain input for the modulator. Notice that the M Vocoder's output signal can only be mono in this mode. The effects panel is where we find a number of additional tools which can be used in conjunction with the Vocoder. And some of them even deserve to be plugins on their own. But we'll talk about that in the third part. Right now, let's consider them as composite parts of a Vocoder. Whitening. If you think that this controller turns a signal into the white noise, then you are not too far from the truth. The idea is to add an extra harmonic content to a carrier signal. When working with a speech vocoder, you'll find that getting an intelligible outcome is not such an easy task. Sometimes we have to go through dozens of possible carrier sounds to find that special one which works the best. The whitening can help here by making the carrier sound brighter and thus considerably improving, so to speak, pronunciation of M Vocoder. Here is the classic carrier sound. And here is the Vocoder's sound. Not too bad. However, we can easily improve it by turning the whitening up. The next effect is the format shift. 
it moves a carrier's formats up and down and can be another creative tool to manipulate M Vocoder's sound. Gate threshold and gate ratio set up a gate effect on every band. If you've watched the first part of this tutorial, you probably remember that a vocoder's output signal can be highly dynamic. To make it more or less predictable, it's suggested to apply some dynamic control to a modulator and carrier before they enter the vocoder. Plus, it will improve the intelligibility of speech. In mVocoder, it's accomplished by applying a saturator to these signals. And that's what saturation car and saturation mod controllers do. Life seems to be seeping by you, like water pouring through your fingers. As the endless days of ponders result only in increasing confusion. The blue gray skies transform my nervous. Happiness of a day go forth without any acknowledgement. Questions continue to gather in numbers, as answers have long feared another world. Why? The mind is a constant reminder of our much unwanted memories. One of the constituent elements of vocoding is a control signal passed from a modulator's filters to corresponding filters of a carrier. This signal is obtained by means of a detector or an envelope follower. The detector panel is what controls its behaviour. I won't spend more time on its parameters as you can find plenty of information on this matter in Compressors, Expanders, Gates tutorial. I'll only mention the freeze button. Pressing on it latches the control signal at its last calculated value and it stays there until you turn this button off. Where we go when you're with me Our destination Filters are the most crucial part of a vocoder. They define its sound the most. You already know what the band's parameter does. Now the car order and mod order control the order of filters through which a carrier and modulator signals go. The higher the value, the higher the order. Higher orders make the filters more selective. That results in a better vocoding effect. The car resonance and mod resonance adjust the resonance of the filters. This is one more way to improve their selectiveness, but in a different way. Values close to 100% may bring the filters to nearly a self-oscillations. For the carrier filters, it means mVocoder may lose its ability to keep track of a carrier signal's pitch. In case of the modulator filters, an excessive resonance may lead to a prolonged sound. In the first part, I said that the control signals of the modulator filters control the according carrier filters, that is, the filter 1, 2, 3 of the modulator control the first, second and third carrier filters. 
and in 99% of the time, you'll probably run mVocoder in this way. However, it doesn't have to always be like that. You can make a high frequency range of a modulator to control a bottom end of a carrier, for example, or you can create some weird combination of the filters. To do that, open the band matrix pop-up window. This is where we can freely reshuffle filter connections. The horizontal axis corresponds to the modulator's filters, starting from the left, one, two, three, and so on. The vertical axis is where we have the carrier's ones. They are counted from the top, one, two, three, to the bottom. White rectangles are connections between filters. To make a connection, simply left-click on the crossing of the two lines coming out of the filters. To disconnect them, right-click on the white rectangle. Note that the deviation from the standard vocoder matrix ruins the central idea of vocoding. For example, if I connect all carrier filters to a single modulator's one, then I will force mVocoder to work rather as a gate effect. The last pop-up window we need to understand is the graphs. Let's open it. On the left side, we can see a selector of mVocoder's parameters. On the top is the Enable button, which switches the graph of the chosen parameters on and off. Let's turn on Frequencies Modulator and have a look at its graph. The vertical axis reflects frequency values. The horizontal one represents a current number of bands evenly distributed along the axis. The idea of this graph is to change that distribution. If I move and set this point here, then I'll shift the bottom limit of the frequency range in which the modulator filter works towards the high end. In a similar manner, if I budge that point, then the top limit will be offset to the left. And this is what we hear. In the second part of this tutorial, we will have a look at Envocoder, control with and mode. Envocoder, talking with some bizarre accent. Please watch the first part. At first glance, Envocoder can make a very scary impression with all its knobs and submenus. So, what is it I actually did? I squeezed the modulator's filters range by limiting it from the top and bottom. However, the carrier's filters still cover the full range from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Thus, I use a smaller frequency range, modulator, to control the full one, carrier. And that's why mVocoder sounds with the accent. In much the same fashion, you can modify the rest of the parameters. Here is a few more examples of what happens to bands if we change the graph shape. I understand that the concept of a band redistribution may be hard to comprehend from the first time, yet as it gives you a great control over mVocoder, I would suggest you spend time with it. Well, we've familiarized with each controller of mVocoda. Now we need to figure out what to do with all this power. We'll talk about it in the final part of this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Hi, we've learned the basics of a vocoder in part one of this tutorial and we've gone through the mVocoders interface in the second one. Now it's time to apply all that theory into practice. As usual, we'll start from the simple stuff and move on to the more complicated. One more thing before we begin. I'll do my best to explain why I'm doing something, but I won't explain how, because it's already covered in the previous parts. 
For a classic vocoder sound, use a saw wave as a carrier. Start from M Vocoder's defaults settings. I gotta get away, I gotta show myself. There ain't nothing more important than I am myself. Then, try turning whitening and saturation mod up. See if they can help to improve phase intelligibility. I gotta get away, I gotta show myself. There ain't nothing more important than I am myself. I gotta prove to me. Speaking of a melody, you can play whatever you like. However, having the same melody for a modulator and carrier gives the best results. As an option, mix the original vocal track with the vocoder. You'll recognize a current trend in pop music straight away. I gotta get away, I gotta show myself That there ain't nothing more important than life than my health I gotta prove to me that I am stronger now No matter what's from my way, I'm never going back down For robot-like voices, use a low-pitch carrier To make it appear lifeless, try a single note sound Invocator is a powerful plugin. You could also chop that long note into smaller ones, corresponding to each syllable, and thus get that mechanical feeling. Embacoda is a powerful plugin. To add an extra bass, connect additional carrier low frequency bands with the very first low band of the modulator. To do that first, find out what's the lowest band which Embacoda uses. This one. Now, you need to connect this modulator's band to the rest of the carrier low bands. Like this. And here's how it sounds. First, the original. Embacoda is a powerful plugin. And with the extra bass. Embacoda is a powerful plugin. For evil like voices, try a white noise instead of the sore wave. I've given up on humans. They're lazy and silly. I'm leaving this planet. It must be said the white noise is probably one of the best sources if you're after a well pronounced vocoder effect, simply because it covers the full audible spectrum. Thus, no matter how wide or limited the modulating signal spectrum is, the carrier will always support it. Curiously, but one of the best ways to push your creativity up is to forget that M Vocoda is a Vocoda. Rather, think of it as a powerful set of filters you can manipulate in a number of ways. I won't go through the same tricks we just used in the voice part. Of course, you can apply them to drums as well. Instead, I'll try to demonstrate filter capabilities of M Vocoda. I'm going to use it as a typical insert effect without worrying about a modulating signal. In this case, M Vocoda will process only a carrier signal, and to hear it, I must turn the ratio knob counterclockwise. You can hear the difference straight away. First of all, let's see what we can achieve with the filters, panels, controllers. I set the car resonance to 25%, turn the bands knob to the leftmost position, press playback, and I start to increase it. As you can hear, even a single parameter change can give you dozens of completely different flavors. But we can have more fun if we start modulating parameters. I'll use a step sequencer to control the band's parameter and the car resonance to set the depth of the effect.
Don't forget the widening. You can tune the whitening more precisely in the graphs pop-up window. Let's explore the Morph 1 mode. Set the ratio to 0.25. I'll start again from four bands. And as I'm increasing the number of bands, the sound is being transformed into something hard to describe. But I still feel you aren't impressed enough. How about this then? and I haven't even started modulating parameters. I'll leave it to you. From all modes, only the vocoder and Morph 1 can give you special effects if you use mVocoder as an insert. The rest of the modes won't do anything apart from letting a dry signal through. We shouldn't forget the LR encoding. It's not as wild as what you've seen so far, yet it may be exactly what you're looking for. As with the voice parts, you can apply these ideas to any sort of material. Surprised? After all, what is a reverb to do with a vocoder? I promise, very soon, you'll have a different point of view. There's a panel we haven't touched yet, the detector. Usually, it's not common for a vocoder to have these parameters available to a user. Fortunately for us, mVocoder is one of those exceptions. As you know, a detector, aka envelope follower, defines the shape of control signals running from filters of a modulator to a carrier's one. By default, its attack and release times are quite short, enough just to minimise the detector's distortion. Because a bigger value, the detector won't follow the actual envelope of the signal and vocoding will be compromised. However, we're about to violate that rule. Here is what I've done. I created FX Buzz with mVocoder in it. I activated its sidechain. Next, I inserted M Noise Generator before mVocoder. I could start from creating FX Buzz with M Noise Generator. However, in this case, I'd get a noise blast at its full volume, which I don't want. I'm going to use mVocoder like I'd use any other reverb plugin. The only difference is, I must send signals into its sidechain, not to FX Buzz. All is set, let's go.
Not something you would expect from a vocoder, would you? Of course, M vocoder doesn't reproduce the sound of the conventional reverb plugins. It has a very specific character. Let's solo this synth part, for example. Dry. And now with M Vocoder. It works especially well with non pitched sounds like drums. You can hardly beat it when it comes to creating weird, bizarre spaces. I guess you've got the picture. Now, let's see how it was done. First, I use a white noise as a carrier. Next, I set the attack to approximately 50 to 80 milliseconds to let signal transients go through clearly. Remember, we're dealing with a vocoder, not a reverb, so no such parameters like pre-delay or early reflections level. I set the release to some arbitrary value. 300 milliseconds will do for a start. I'm sure you know that a natural reverberation has a shorter decay at high frequencies, to emulate this, I decrease the release for high bands in the graphs pop-up window. As in many of the examples before, the filters panel plays the biggest part in tuning the sound. Basically, that's all. I think we can place this type of vocoding reverb between a convolution and an algorithmic one. Because on one hand, it uses principles found in convolution reverb. However, on the other hand, its nature is not static. Remember, a noise generator works constantly. That is a feature of the algorithmic reverb. I hope these ideas will be a good foundation for you to create your own. I tried to escape a traditional paradigm of vocoding and to show that there are more in a vocoder than just robot-like voices. Thank you for watching and happy vocoding. Oh, I forgot to mention that during all three parts, I've been talking through Mbakoda. This is the reason for the crunchy character of my voice.